So you bought an Amazfit Band 7. What the hell were you thinking? Just kidding. Actually, I really like this watch. Uh, today's video, I'm going to go over how to customize all the settings on this, or all the important settings that most people are probably interested in. So when you swipe to the side, you get these uh, apps on the side here, and these are called quick access apps. And uh, half of customizing this watch is just knowing where everything's called so you can know where to find it all. So there's no way to customize this on the watch, so if you were getting frustrated trying to do that, uh, that's why. So let me show you how to do it on the phone. So you gotta get into the Zep app, which you uh, should have downloaded when you activated your watch initially. So let's go into here, and we need to get into the profile portion of the app. And then if you have a few bands up here, just click the one that you're using. And then we have to go into uh, band settings. And then if you find here, quick access apps, edit quick access apps. And these are all the apps that are on there right now. And these are the ones that are not on there. And if you want to add them, all you need to do is just click plus and now it's on there. And then if you want to move these around, you just hold the uh, three bars here. I could do it. And then just kind of adjust the order of them. That is the quick access apps. And then before you leave, you just have to hit save to any changes. And um, if you don't want to, then you just discard it. Now we have the apps that everybody's familiar with. You slide up, and then here are all the apps that are on there. I have just about all of them on there. And if you want to adjust those, meaning you want to take some off, you want to rearrange them or do anything, again, you can't do it on the watch. You always have to do it on the app. So to, to customize the app order and which apps are on your watch, you have to go into the Zep app, the profile again. We gotta to go to our band seven. And then we're just gonna to go to app list management. These are all the apps that I have on the watch right now. This is the More app, which is actually a kind of a cool feature. I'll show you that in a second. And these are the apps that are not on there that I could add if I want to. Again, to add them, you just hit plus. To take them out, you just hit the minus and move it out uh, from there into the hidden apps. And then if you want to adjust them, you just hold one and just slide it up and down. But on the More app, so if you look here and go through your apps, you got all the apps there. And then I have this More app. So in this app, I could actually put some apps maybe that I use kind of frequently, but not that frequently that I need them on my uh, list all the time. But when I need them, I just hit the more app and then I can get into some more apps there. And then I could, again, uh, adjust this, put a couple in there, put a lot in there, whatever I want to do. So it kind of makes it that you have one icon there that you could have several apps behind. It just makes it easier to organize and easier to swipe and find it. So that's again right here in the more app here. You add all them here. You can move them up and down, adjust them, take them away, whatever you want to do. So, uh, don't be disappointed, but let me show you the Zep App Store. Uh, and there is no Apple apps here, there's no Google, no third-party apps or anything else, it's just a few of the Zep apps that are available. So I'll just show you uh, so you can see what it is in case you didn't buy the watch yet and you're thinking about doing it. So if you go into here, you hit the band seven, click App Store, which is easy to find. And then these are all the apps, not that many. So let me just show you the top apps here and you can just see what is kind of available. And there's not an extreme amount of functionality, but a couple that you might be interested in. And I'll just uh, also list here that uh, the Rain app, I downloaded that right away, and it kind of crashed my watch um, and froze it. And then basically I had to down uh, delete it from my app here, and then it worked again. So it got five stars, so maybe they fixed the bug since then, but just be careful of that. Just a quick timeout to inform you what I do on this channel. I uh, review uh, phones, watches, new tech gadgets, new household uh, gadgets, and I also go over all the software and features and uh, all the things that are available in these things so that hopefully you can get the most out of each of your products that you have. If you have any interest in that uh, kind of thing, please uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, and it uh, really helps me grow my audience, and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Back to the video. Now, another thing you can customize is this thing. You scroll down. This is, uh, I like to call it the quick toggles, but this is actually the control center. You can put six uh, toggles on here, then you can slide across, and you can get a couple more uh, toggles on there if you want. And you could actually fit them all, because there's only like uh, 10, I think. But let me show you how to, you can't customize them at all on the watch. You can only do it on the app. So let me show you how to do that. Again, you're in the app, and you got to go to profile. You got to hit this. Then we actually have to go to band settings again and then edit control center. So if you couldn't find that, you'd be forgiven. But these are uh, the apps that I, the toggles that I have on there now, and then these are a the few that I have off. So if I just wanna add them on there, and again, you can add them all and you can fit them both on the screen. If you just want a quick toggle screen where you swipe down and only one screen is there, then you just limit yourself to six. And let me just go back here to uh, band settings. 
So you could do some of this on the watch, but this is actually much easier to do on the app. So display and brightness, click on this. Obviously, you could change the brightness on there. You could change the screen on duration, which is nice and easy. And then the always on display, you can click that. You could have it so uh, that you have it enabled. And if you enable it, then you could have it turn on automatically. Kind of the uh, AI or the watch will know when you want it on and off. Or you could schedule it, or you could just leave it on all day and all night. So that's kind of up to you. And this is uh, back to band settings. This is kind of a cool one that uh, I haven't really seen on any other watches. So if you hit vibration, and then uh, you could obviously toggle it on and off. If you toggle it off, there will be no, no notifications because there's no speaker on the watch. The vibration intensity you can change from normal to enhanced, it's called. Uh, just give it a little extra feedback. You might want to use that for uh, an alarm setting or something. But if you click the vibration here, you got all your uh, kind of notifications or alerts. And you can pick one and you could make your own vibration pattern, which is really cool. So if I did this, this is the incoming, incoming call. I have it for my test one I just labeled. And this is test two, uh, two vibration patterns I picked or I made. And then you could just pick which one you want. Now, if you want to add one, just hit this. And then you could do whatever you want with this. You could do a short tap, you could do a long tap, and you won't be able to hear it. But if you look here, when it says red, that's kind of when it's going to be vibrating. This is my, that's my pattern, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and stop. And I'm going to save it. And then I could call it whatever I want. So this is test three. Now, um, again, when I pick any of these alerts, I could just pick any of these uh, vibration patterns I have. So I could have the same vibration pattern for a couple of them. You could have 10 different vibration patterns. And if you make it customized enough so that you uh, get the alert, you could just feel it, uh, the vibration pattern, then you'll know exactly what it is, if it's something that you need to look at or if you don't need to even interact with it at all. Uh, so that's kind of a cool feature that you can do. So back to the uh, band settings, just uh, I'm not going to go through all these. Like I said, just kind of go through some of the important ones. So there's a do not disturb on here. Uh, this is nice because the band does not have any auto dimming feature. So usually I have it up pretty bright to see it during the day. Um, but when it, at nighttime, if you wear it to go to sleep, uh, you turn, you flick your wrist and you get this big bright screen. So that's kind of annoying. So you could set up the do not disturb and you could schedule, you could auto enable it so that it knows what it's doing. And then, or you could schedule it so you have a specific time of night and day that you want to do it. So you could have it turned off at night. So when you flip your wrist, nothing will light up, which is kind of neat. Also in the band settings, you can have it when you take off your watch and put it down, it will automatically lock and then you would need a password to reactivate it. That would be if you you know put your watch down or if it falls off your wrist or something like that and then someone else can't use your stuff. It's not as critical with this one because you don't have a lot of critical information on there. There's no credit cards, there's no contacts or anything like that. But still, you don't want someone else to have your stuff. And you could dis uh, disable it uh, from the app so that you someone wouldn't be getting your notifications and stuff. But if you do want to lock it, that's what you would have to do. If anyone's interested, this is the Z Fold 4. I did a bunch of videos on this, how to use the big screen, all the extra features that come with this thing, and a bunch of different ways to use the, the S Pen, which is really powerful on this one. So if you're interested, uh, just click up here, and I'll also put a link in the description. So back to this video. If you go to the profile portion of the app, and you just scroll down, and you hit Settings, and units. I just want to show you this because actually I, uh, my watch, I had to do it once and then it kind of reverted back to the old way and then I had to set it again. So if you just hit units, you pick which one you want and uh, if you need to change it, that's where it is. Okay, so let's uh, show you some watch faces. So on this watch, if you just, uh, this is one thing you can customize. You hold it and then you could just kind of swipe up and down and find a watch face that you might want to be interested in. And so there you go. So let me just show you how to get into those watch faces. Again, you got to be in the profile portion of uh, the app. Let's get into here. And then we get into self-explanatory watch faces. And so you can see what's available here. Uh, Amazfit says there's over 50, but I, I think there might even be more than that. And you can see there's a lot of different kind of styles. And then in each one of these little things here, you could hit the more. And then more uh, pictures show up here. So you can, there's a pretty good amount of uh, watch faces here that you can get through. And some of those are uh, free, some of them are dollars, some of them are $2. I didn't see anything more than that. Another reason people buy this watch is for the health tracking, health monitoring. So we're going to see here. This is in the profile portion of the app again. We hit the health monitoring, and here's a lot of things that we can adjust. You could do the uh, auto heart rate monitor. You can change this to whatever time frame you want to do it. But if you set it for one minute, then you're able to set a high heart rate alert and a low heart rate alert. If you, uh, and Even if you do it in five minutes, you can set these. Anything more than five minutes, then you can't uh, set these. 
and then activate uh, heart rate uh, monitoring. So if you order, if you watch order, it's actually working out. It will automatically turn on the heart rate. I'd probably leave that on, but uh, you could turn that off if you want to. You have the sleeping assist here. Uh, sometimes you might wear, want to wear the watch to bed and not use the sleep tracking because it does use up some of the battery and maybe you're just not interested in the data at all. Um, but you might want to wear the watch so you have an alarm that will wake you up in the morning and you know maybe not wake up your partner or so. So that would be a reason you could turn this off if you want to. And you could actually set up a smart alarm, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. And then we have the stress. Obviously, you could turn that on and off. You could do a stress re reminder on there, and you got the blood oxygen down here. And uh, if you set this uh, to do it, measure you frequently, then you could do a low oxygen alert. Keep in mind, if you turn all these things on and they're continuously measuring all of them, your battery might die a little bit. So if your battery is going a little quicker than you expected, then go through these and kind of monitor and see which one you want to uh, reduce or change. Okay, another thing in the profile portion of the app is the notification and reminders. We click on this, and this is what you got here. Now, uh, I think some of these were turned off by default when I first got it. So just check these. If you're not getting your uh, notifications, go ahead and just make sure that it is on. And also, if you do app alerts, you could actually have an alert for any app that you have on your phone, which is kind of cool. And then the standard reminder, um, this you might want to turn off if you have a desk job or something like that. And if you're sitting for long periods, the standing reminder goes off, uh, I think, every half an hour or hour. Uh, it keeps letting you know to get up and stretch and do whatever. If you like that, go ahead and leave it on. If not, then that's where you can turn it off. So again, we're in the profile portion of the app. And I just wanted to show you down here, if you go to these app settings, these few apps here, you could actually edit right here. Uh, you could add an event to the calendar or a to-do list. And you could just add whatever you want and save it there. Very easy to do. You can't do this on the watch, obviously. And then also you could do uh, your alarm. If you pick your alarm time and then you toggle this thing on. So instead of waking up, if you set your alarm for seven o'clock, you click on this and then it will the watch will decide when you're on in your lightest sleep pattern and it will wake you up then. And it could be up to a half an hour before uh, the wake up time. So if you set this for seven, you could be woken up anywhere between 6.30 and seven and hopefully you wake up, you know, less groggy. I actually haven't used that. Uh, put it in the comments if uh, that was helpful for you and you like that. Let me know, or if you use it and you didn't like it. So basically everything we've done so far has been in the profile portion of the app, but we do have a home page here and this you could edit. This kind of gives you a status update. You could have your uh, workout activity on here, your sleep status and you know your heart rate, your stress, all that kind of stuff you could have listed here. And if you just go down to the bottom, you could edit. And then this is all the stuff that you could have available there. You can, and you could change the order. You could add some things back on there or you could have them off and that's on your status bar. If you click up here, this little clover pattern here, this will get basically give you historical data. So you can click on any of these things and it'll go over the history of what you've uh, done over the last weeks and months. Um, I haven't used it for sleep tracking much, but let me just show you here. So, you know, it just kind of gives you the whole uh, month here and this goes back as long as you want. And if you have other Amazfit um, bands and watches, it will keep all the data in here and it'll sync it together, which is kind of cool. So sometimes it gives you some uh, tips over here. If you weren't uh, sleeping well, it'll give you some tips of what you could do a little bit better. And again, it kind of just shows you all the data there. So that's kind of cool. And then this little health thing here in the middle, this kind of just shows you uh, your previous um, history and you could set not too many things here, but let me just show you its edit. You could do your previous running uh, exercises, your cycling and walking, and then your target. That's about all you could do on there. So it's not all that useful. The uh, This homepage is kind of better. It has a lot more information that you can customize a little bit better. All in all, I really do like the Amazfit uh, Band 7. Uh, it actually is very customizable. Uh, unfortunately, you have to do it all through the app, but that's okay. Uh, the app is actually uh, very good, pretty fluid. There's a couple of things that were a little hidden that uh, hopefully I helped you uh, find. But other than that, it's actually pretty good to do, and the battery life on this is great. The feature set is great. I did do a full review on this, and I'll just link it up here, and um, I'll also put it in the description if you're interested in that. I'll also do a video where um, I'll compare the Watch 5, uh, the Band 5, to the Band 7 and you can see the pros and cons and see which one is best for you. So if you're interested, uh, please turn on your notifications. Uh, it would really be uh, appreciated if you subscribe to the channel. That would help me out a lot. And uh, turn on your notifications and like it. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next video.